Good morning. It is the 23rd of February. This is our last devotion for the, the month. Uh, March starts next week. So I hope you're ready with your Bibles as we talk again about the blessings of God upon our lives. And we'll be looking again at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9 today. So let's begin with prayer. Father, I thank you for the blessings and the abounding grace that you provide for each believer. I thank you for the Spirit of God that you provide for each believer. I thank you for the nature of our great God that you work into the life of each believer, that we might be overcomers indeed, that we might be able to do the impossible, that we might be able to follow in the footsteps of our great God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose, in whose name we pray. Amen. I hope you've had a blessed week. I say that a lot to people. But as we talk, <coughs> excuse me, as we talk about being blessed by God, finding ourselves happy uh, in, in our lives with God, the life that he's given us, we're called in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, to be peacemakers. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Um, peacemakers, those who diffuse uh, divisions, quarrelings, uh, disruptions, who bring about a sense of peace in a relationship, these will be called the children of God. And, and why can we say that? Because peace is part of the nature of God. Uh, God is able to do the impossible. God is able to be an overcomer, to lead us into overcoming. And, and all this dwells in us through his nature. You see, he gives us the Holy Spirit, his spirit, to indwell each believer. And this spirit works his nature in us. And you say, what is this nature of the Almighty that we have within us? Well, we it's holiness, righteousness, justice. It's uh, also in Galatians chapter 5, we find out that it's love and joy and peace, that it's uh, goodness and kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, patience, uh, self-control. Uh, we don't have outbursts of anger. Uh, we may be disturbed about things, may be upset about things, but we don't just blow up. Uh, we are faithful to our great God as he's faithful to us. And we have peace in our hearts, peace between us and God, and peace between us and other men. Uh, you say, well, it's impossible. You no, know, with God it is possible. All things are possible with God. Uh, so as we each have this peaceable, meek spirit living within us, we have to learn to be filled with the Holy Spirit, learn to walk in this peace, to walk in the Spirit and uh, to allow him to control our lives. And we don't like the thought of someone else controlling us or telling us what to do. But in sense, when we give our life to Jesus to be saved and forgiven of our sins, that's exactly what we're doing. We're placing our lives in his hands for his control and his decisions. And that's played out in the Holy Spirit indwelling each believer. Colossians 3.15 says, and let the peace of Christ, whose peace? Not ours, because we have no peace, but the peace of Christ, the peace of the Holy Spirit, rule in your hearts. It needs to have rulership in our lives, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Have gratitude for this spirit that rules us with peace and dignity. Uh, we reside together together, as the body of Christ and the Spirit of God, we reside in peace together. 2 Corinthians 13, 11 says, Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration of relationships. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live together in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. So we're to live together. We're to let the peace rule us. This peace, 
as we just read, and this restoration of relationships is again mentioned in 2 Corinthians 5. Not only are we supposed to have a spirit of restoring relationships and being unified in the spirit, but our ministry to others inside and outside the church is one of reconciliation, restoring right relationships. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and following, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself. That's what Jesus did when he died on the cross and saved us through our faith. He reconciled us. He restored a right relationship between us and our creator, Yahweh and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He didn't just reconcile us so that we would have a right relationship with him, but he gave us a, a ministry, a life purpose to reconcile other relationships through faith in Jesus Christ, to reconcile families, churches, that we might all walk together in the spirit of unity and peace. He says that is... In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their transgressions against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So this is peace that we offer people to reconcile and bring about right relationships together, that we might live together in unity of the Spirit. As we live together and are filled with the Spirit, we should strive daily for this peace. Uh, we should strive daily to be filled with the Spirit, filled with the nature of God. For daily we have tribulations, daily we have problems, daily things come up. Daily I irritate people and people irritate me. Uh, I had one man tell me one time that he, sometimes I make him very angry. I don't mean to. And so we should strive for peace every day. Hebrews twelve fourteen says, strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness with, without which no one will see the Lord. We are called, indwelt by the Holy Spirit, we are called to be holy, for he is holy in dwelling us. Our thoughts, holy. Our words, holy. Our actions, holy. But we're to strive for peace when there's a disagreement between me and someone else. I should, should strive for reconciliation and peace in that relationship. I shouldn't go around just being angered and bothered about it. I should do something about it. Even with the Holy Spirit, the nature of God, it's not always possible to be reconciled. It's not always possible to have peace with one another. Because you see, in a relationship, it's two-sided. I may determine peace. I may strive for peace. I may desire peace. I may walk in peace. But the person on the other end of the relationship may not desire that, may not be moved by that, and therefore the peace is not possible. Possible from my side and from God's side, but not from theirs. So I, I can't be discouraged if there's no peace. I can only strive for it and do what I can to bring it about. Because Romans 12, 18 says, If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. That's my calling, to live peaceably with all. Not to be divisive, not to be oppressive, not to be offensive. I will be all those things if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. For he divides as much as he unifies. But I'm to strive to live at peace with all men. And that's what God requires of me. That's what God requires of each believer in Jesus Christ who has the Holy Spirit indwelling him is to live at peace with all men, our enemies, our friends, our family, those who offend us, and those who are closest friends. So may you be at peace today with God and with others. Have a blessed day.